folks, Josephine Sabora here. Last week I reviewed the original Lady and the Tramp, which is considered to be the most romantic animated classics of all time from Disney. You know, about a beautiful Cocker Spaniel and a, <laughs> a very slick, but um, a very um, wonderful um, stray mutt. Together they fell in love with each other, they go for all these adventures, and of course, they have spaghetti at Tony's restaurant, which gave us that iconic scene. I also like to add that this is the kind of movie that does make you want to have a dog, especially a Cocker Spaniel. And yeah, I actually did have one before uh, when I was only a kid, but it was a, a, a male named Max, very cute dog, uh, pretty big, um, which I only had him until he passed uh, sometime in 1993. Yeah, I, I had him since 1990. Uh, but it does make me want to have a Cocker Spaniel as a female. It's so beautiful. You know, kind of like the one that you saw in the movie Underdog. Uh, which was voiced by Amy Adams as Polly uh, Purbred. Yeah. Which, interestingly enough, they also did a <laughs> a parody of uh, Lady and the Tramp too with the spaghetti scene. Yeah, but with Underdog. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but now I'm going to be reviewing the live-action CGI hybrid remake that aired on Disney Plus uh, since. Um, I think they aired it uh, after the service had debuted it. But I didn't see the movie until just recently, during Valentine's Day weekend last week. And before I had to go out, you know, to Goodwill to get some movies and and then I had to work on all these other commercials and stuff. I mean, I even posted a video of the two posters I show you from these poster frames. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, as we know it, it's Lady and the Tramp from 2019, and you probably already know the story already, <laughs> but let's get right to it. Um, the difference here for this version, though, aside from the fact that, yes, it's live action with CGI on the dogs, I mean, mostly for the mouth movements and, and all these other courageous movements here and there, and how they did it, even though they did use uh, real animals, just blend into it. Uh, the fact that this time uh, Jim Deere and Darlene, the couple, are now interracial. Yeah, they throw in a lot of diversity on this. Yeah, we're now Darlene is black. So they show all the black families and all the other ones around. I mean, there's other uh, people with different race. Like I think there's, I think the the dog catcher is basically Latino or possibly a little bit Italian. But of course, you know, you're also going to have Tony, and who's um, of course Italian as as we speak, and, and all the rest. And then there's going to be some several changes compared to the original film. I mean, they're not going to have the memorable scene of, of when the tramp started uh, chasing the chickens, or even having a scene where you know both Lady and, and the tramp were walking around, you know, you know, during like for example the the sidewalk where they actually put their paw prints on there, and you can even see the the hearts from some lovers. <laughs> I mean this time they're just gonna throw in uh, a boat ride and they're also gonna throw in some other particular scenes uh, that was not in the original. So that's exactly what I expected to see. Of course I kinda of felt a bit optimistic about this one because again with Disney's track record of live action remakes you know, some are either good bad, mediocre, so-so, decent, I mean, you name it. Uh, but for this movie alone, though, I would say it's not bad. 
I mean, it won't hold a candle to the original film, but it's not bad as, as it seems because we still have the story, and the animals look cute, and I love the performances that they got. I mean, I was almost afraid that, you know, they're just going to be able to just try to compete with all the other performances that we had in the originals because you can't top those and I was almost afraid they're gonna start putting some generic uh, pop music in there and all that stuff which I was hoping they weren't gonna do that but I know they were gonna put some songs uh, as we all remembered you know like Bella Notte oh also I forgot the, the song from the soundtrack you know where where Darlene actually sings to her uh, newborn child uh, la la loo la la loo <laughs> yeah of course I probably would have loved to see a memorable uh, scene inside the the live action remake where you know ladies in her thoughts you know trying to figure out what is a baby <laughs> But they still have some of the memorable quotes from the movie itself. So, anyway. um, it's not on Blu-ray nor DVD. It's still on Disney Plus. But I guess if you want to be able to have it on your own, well, you might as well just have to buy these BDRs or DVDRs, maybe even dual layer ones, so you can have a high definition transfer that you can find online. I mean, I know it's it's not exactly legal, but probably the best you could do if you want to have your own copy of this live action remake. Because I'm not even so sure Disney will ever release this on physical media. Although, it's amazing that already they're releasing Soul, that just got released on Disney Plus, and it's going to be released in March of this year, so let's hope that'll be the case. I mean, hey, you know, I, I just found out that you know, there was one movie that just got released recently on Blu-ray after waiting for several years to finally come out, and that was The Little Prince. Um, yeah, I can't believe it, but Paramount finally released The Little Prince, the CGI animated feature on Blu-ray. I mean, the movie got a Netflix release uh, back in 2016, and I was praying that They'll soon be able to release it sometime in 2017, but they didn't. So, I hope I can pick this up later, though. And I know, because a lot of releases just came out, too. And I'm happy to, to discover that Good Burger finally got released uh, uh, last week. <laughs> and it looks to me like the transfer looks um, terrific. But I'll talk about that. Um, if I ever buy the movie, I'll talk about it. But anyway... I know, it's slightly off topic because I'm just trying to mention about what's going on. Um, it stars Thomas Mann, uh, Kersey Clements, Yvette uh, Nicole Brown, uh, which you may remember her from the TV show Drake and Josh. Yeah, and she was in Community too. She's been in a lot of stuff. Uh, Adrian Martinez. F. Murray Abraham, yes, best known uh, for his Academy Award winning woe in Amadeus, but he's been in a lot of stuff. It's great to see him. Atoro Castro, uh, who was in a TV show on Netflix called Narcos. Uh, he was also in the Comedy Central series uh, Broad City. Uh, Kate uh, Nealan. Daryl W. Handy, Parvish uh, Chinas, yeah, those are the the actors themselves. Plus uh, the voice acting of Tessa Thompson, yep, you may remember her from Four Regarock. And she was also, of course, <laughs> uh, most recently in Men in Black International. Yeah, teaming up with. Uh, Chris Hemsworth. Among other films she's done recently, uh, Justin Feroxy, he was in movies like The Holland Drive, Empire, uh, Sam Elliott, yes, uh, legendary Sam Elliott, um, it's been a lot of great films, 
um, Ashley Judson, Janelle Monet, Benedict Wan, Clancy Brown, yes, Clancy Brown, Nate Wonder, Roman Glenn Arthur, and James Bentley. Of course, you know, based on the story, uh, which was a a magazine article from the Cosmopolitan magazine, a you know, woman's magazine uh, by Ward Green called Happy Dan the Cynical Dog. And of course, based on the 1955 film by four writers, um, Erman Penner, Joe Wendaldi, Ralph Wright, and Don Tegrati. It's written by, of course, um, Andrew Wojcicki and Kari Grenlund. So we've got two writers. And it's directed by Charlie Bean, who actually directed um, the Lego Ninja Go movie. Um, he also had worked on Tron Uprising and as of course a storyboard artist for Dexter's Laboratory. Um, also to note though that um, this movie was actually dedicated to a storyboard artist named Chris uh, Riccardi who believe it or not passed away on my birthday May 2nd 2019. Can you believe that? Yeah, and I was only 34 at the time. The movie begins set somewhere in 19th century Louisiana. Yeah, they changed the, the town, too. It's not the Midwestern town as we speak, yeah, like an actual American town. Um, it's actually pretty much like near New Orleans, in a way. Um, but we meet um, the two couples that are now interracial. Yeah, one is Caucasian and the other one is black. Um, named Jim Deere and Darling, both played by Thomas Mann and Kersey Clemmings. On this particular Christmas Day, uh, Jim gave his wife a gift, which turned out to be, of course, a female American Cocker Spaniel named Lady, as Darling named her. So she fit right in to this entire house. A beautiful home, but of course, uh, Jim had decided to, well in this version, decided to put uh, the basket and the newspaper in their bedroom instead of just putting her out of the kitchen, but because, you know, Lady was so lonely a little bit, she didn't want to sleep there, she decided to sleep with both Jim and Darling, and it was only for one night, but that one night eventually <laughs> became pretty much every night as she grew. <laughs> and of course she did became friends with her neighbor's dogs, um, the elder bloodhound named Trusty, voiced by Sam Elliott, and the feisty Scottish Terrier, who I believe is now a female, but could have been a male, and Jock, voiced by Ashley Jensen, yeah, living next door to this um, Scottish woman. So it's like we're seeing more filler characters to join. But meanwhile, we meet uh, a Shazer, Shaznazer Mutz, a stray who renames nameless, but in, at this point on, it's Tramp, who's voiced by Justin Feroxy, who spends his days wandering around the streets of New Orleans, search for food and causing a lot of havoc and trouble for the dog catcher named Elliot. Was played by Adrian Martinez. Yeah, he's Hispanic. But after freeing his friends of Bull and Peg from Elliot's uh, carriage, yeah, and Bull and Peg are voiced by Benedict Juan and Janelle Monet. Yeah, and this time, of course, um, Peg is a Ohasa Apso instead of a Pekidese. But pretty close. The bull, of course, is a bulldog. <laughs> okay. Um, so he wants a ray and ends up in the deer's uh, backyard, and that's where he ends up finding the lady, you know, who lady, of course, was trying to find Jacques, you know, just to explain what's going on. Because already, uh, um, Darlene's uh, relatives, that also includes Aunt Sarah, who's played by Yvette Nicole Brown, 
um, they were having a baby shower because of her newborn child that's, you know, she's pregnant and she'll soon be, you know, ready for it. So, of course, they couldn't allow the lady. And at that point on, um, already being ignored by the adults, um, she found Tramp, tries to give it away his position until he points out that Darlene, of course, is having, just giving his position and all. Um, Tramp actually warns um, Lady about, you know, the baby, which, of course, led to the quote, the baby comes in, the dog stays out. And soon, the baby had arrived, you know, from the doctor, which was played by Ken John. And, yeah, Ken John, of course, uh, best known for, for the the movie uh, The Hangover, among others. <laughs> um, they just now had a, a little girl named Lulu. And that's where you hear the song, La La Lu, La La Lu. Unfortunately, Lady was not ready to actually experience her until later. Um, and this is exactly what how this happens when Jim and Darling decided to take Lulu out and leave um, Aunt Sarah to house sit, which, yep, with Lady being all alone, and that's where Sarah brought in the in her basket the two uh, cats. They're not Siamese cats this time. They're just you know regular, different kind of cats. Um, both named Devin and Rex, and they of course had created a lot of havoc inside the entire living room. Lady takes the blame, which sucks, I know. And that's where Aunt Sarah decided to take uh, Lady directly to the pet store to give her a muzzle, which she ran away. And then Tramp came by and took, tried to find a way to take this muzzle out. Instead of the actual, um, that's another change here too in the story. I mean, instead of having to go to the zoo and, and try to have like, a beaver, you know, and pretend like this muzzle is actually a, a log puller. Yeah, this time it's basically Tramp just taking the, her to a statue to take the muzzle off, and now they're running around, you know, spending time together, doing those other adventures. And then later at night, they went to Tony's restaurant, and that's where we have the iconic spaghetti scene as we all expected but of course we got to meet Tony who's played by F. Murray Abraham joining in with Chef Joe played by Arturo Castro and that's exactly how we saw it <laughs> and then they, of course they had to explain about how Tramp actually had a home too but didn't work out as it seems um, of course, I did mention earlier about the boat ride. Yeah, they actually went on a boat ride, too. Um, you know, again, you know, spending some adventures and, and all that. I know that's not in the original film, but I guess they knew they wanted to add something new. And plus, there's a band playing, too. So that's really nice. So I, I can see why they're trying their best not to duplicate too much, even though they are going to duplicate some scenes. Uh... So anyway, but it's also nice to find out that Tramp did once uh, reveal that he had his owners, but of course it didn't work out. He got abandoned, you know, once they had a child, so it's kind of similar to what Lady was going through. And then they're being found by Elliot, so now they're being chased around. Apparently uh, Lady got caught, Tramp was all alone, but hoping to finally find her somewhere. And that's where we went straight to the dog pound, where we got to see all the dogs, you know, in prison. Even the puppies and all. And they speak, too. And, of course, that's where we see, you know, Peg and explaining about who Tramp is. 
of course, he even says to the, to the lady before, you know, I, I used to be called different other names. Because <laughs> even though Tramp does spend time in the, the train station, like in a coal mine somewhere, you know, sleeping and creating some trouble, and that's why they, they called the dog catcher the crab. But the next morning, um, because of course, Lady does have a collar with the license and her name. Jim and Darlene actually pick Lady up and actually evicted Aunt Sarah from visiting their house again. And I'm like, thank God. I wish they did that in the original film too. And you know, they should have evicted her all this time because we all know that she's trouble. I mean, she hated dogs, and the fact that she had to bring the cats around, thinking that Lady did all this, I mean, God, that's smart right there, because you know that she's a nut. I never liked Aunt Sarah, and, and it shows. Especially in live-action form, too, but, of course, the actress is very good, too. So now Lady had began to bond with Lulu, and things turned out um, great. But then... Tramp had discovered that Pig and Bull had been adopted, so it's nice to know, only causing him to regret leaving Lady behind. So he tries to go back home to apologize, but then all of a sudden, the rat came along. Yeah, you know the rat from the original. Um, they're in danger, but then, of course, the dog catcher came along too, Elliot, just trying to capture uh, Tramp because he's suddenly running around. But they're trying to... Um, just butting him up too because so they had to hide um, a lady into the closet and just for safety so they won't know only to note that yes um, the rat came and lady told Tramp uh, just when Tramp was about to get her out of there that he wants him to save the baby you know, Lulu so they had to go all the way up to the bedroom trying to attack that rat but then next we know, Elliot came and, and suddenly takes the dog away and put him inside the, the truck, uh, or the wagon. And then, yeah, I guess you could say that. So then, um, apparently, uh, both um, Trusty and, and Jock were upset about, um, because they feel like they mistrust uh, Tramp. So, with Lady around, they they all went together trying to get uh, Tramp out of there. And this is done pretty differently, too, because, you know, all three of them did actually, uh, they went together. I mean, we found out that uh, Trusty now got his sense of smell back, but he's still having some trouble. So now he's beginning on the search to find the, the carriage, and then... And once they try to free uh, Tramp out, apparently uh, Tramp got hurt. Because um, I, I know in the original film it was Trusty that got hurt, or Paul, but it's really Tramp in this one. So that's another change. Uh, but apparently um, Tramp was alright. Uh, everyone was okay, so. Now uh, Jim and Darling came by to tell Elliot that, you know, they decided to adapt Tramp, so that way, you know, it won't cause any more trouble anymore. I'm hoping this will be perfect for Lady, so now they'll be together. And that's how it happened, and, and soon Christmas had arrived again, and now both Lady and the Tramp are together. They have puppies, <laughs> which of course they brought in Trusty and Jock around to, to spend time. So, <laughs> very cute. Now uh, Tramp has a collar with a license too, and they all live together happily ever after. Yeah. Yep, that's the remake. Um, and I'll be fair, it's not a bad remake at all. In fact, I think it's a 
it's a good remake. Um, I mean, I was almost afraid how this was going to turn out, but at the end, um, at least the story was there, and and they did what they could. The only problem was, though, because of its uh, runtime. Hey, I, I understand. Was that the pacing kind of seemed a bit off at times? It kind of drags it in a bit, and and I guess the screenplay just seemed like they want to add all this other stuff. And some of the effects, you know, kind of wasn't handled very well as it seems. Although none of them were, were bad. But I think what matters the most, however, was the performances, and I think that's probably what they really went for. Um, because there's not a bad um, there's not a bad uh, performance anywhere from these actors. I mean, they played them exactly straight. But at least um, for the most of the story, I, I thought they really did improve something here and there even if they had to do some major changes with one or the other, but as long as they they pay full respect to the original, then that's exactly what they should do. And I thought they did okay. Um, but still, um, happy to see them in live action form, I mean, the doves, they just look uh, beautiful. Almost closer to looking um, almost exactly like the original film. I mean, even if they had to do some changes here, I mean, I guess they could have had gotten the Picadies to play Peg right there, but that's still. And I know they had to go for diversity here, but I, I guess I can live with that. I mean, it's because, you know, in this PC world, you know, everything has changed for, well, for the better or not for the worse, but. Um, does have nice cinematography, um, some great editing choices, um, some nice music that they threw in. I mean, there's there's a bit of like Italian in there too. I mean, of course, with the Bella Notte and all. Um, but of course, there have been some here and there. Uh, its budget was only 16 million, surprisingly. So this was um, pretty big for its budget. I mean, it's not like it's a box office success because, unfortunately, it's on a streaming service. Although, of course, some streaming services will actually start uh, earning its shares because of how many subscribers we're getting. And I guess because if it wasn't for all this other stuff they put into it, I mean, it could have been a lot worse. But as far as I'm concerned, I think it's a lot better than than the two live-action movies we got in 2019, um, which is, of course, Aladdin and The Lion King, because I know both of these films suffer. I mean, luckily, this movie did have energy in there, so it shows. Um, I guess I could say it's a little better than Dumble, but I did enjoy Tim Burton's Dumble. Which I think it's an underrated live-action remake, as much as being an underrated uh, original film. So, so didn't think it was that bad. So I, I figured, you know, I mean, if you love the original Lady and the Tramp, because it's a classic, no doubt. I mean, you love these dogs. You make it does make you want to have one too once you see them, and how beautiful they were. How wonderful and how they had all these wonderful adventures considering how romantic it is I mean this is for you but and I love the voice acting of course I mean Sam Elliott is the perfect choice to do the voice of trustee he was great I, I knew they were gonna get him um, and I thought Tessa Thompson and Justin Furoxy did a, a tremendous job uh, since we know Lady and the Tramp had terrific chemistry together, and rightly so. And so, for its update, it's 
I mean, I, I knew I made a mistake not seeing this, but if I had seen it back in 2019, I think it would have been close enough to putting this on my best list. Um, but I guess I can try to do that. Because <laughs> I am reviewing this in 2021. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway. So that's Lady and a Tramp, 2019 live action CGI hybrid remake. And I give the movie. Why not? Four stars. It won't top the original classic, but still. It does have um, the nice moments, the energy, and everything that went into it. You know, in spite of the pacing issues and, and maybe some effects didn't quite fit. And, and the screenplay could have been done a little well, but that's okay. It's not too bad. Come from two writers. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.